keep them talking. And then I always, next thing I might go to is tell me about your business. You know, how long you been here? How'd you get started? What kind of business do you see? And if I get them talking, you know, just like Bobby says, you know, you, you get them talking and start listening. Uh, and then they may even have some objections, like, you know, I, I've already heard about you guys, you know, we're getting everything bought already, all that kind of stuff. And one of the things I was just throw them at it is, you know, what are you doing with the 450 Beacon that walks in with a thousand down? What do you do with that customer now? What lender do you put them with? You know, what if they want that $8,000 car out there? What do you do with that deal? Tell me. And a lot of times it's, they're like, uh, well, <laughs> I send them down the road or, or whatever, you know, especially if it's buy your pay here. Uh, they don't really have a good answer for that. And that usually opens up the dialogue right there. I agree 100%. Uh, there is an elevator speech, but you shouldn't be the one giving it. You should be the one listening. Uh, people love to talk about themselves. And there is a brand recognition with credit acceptance. I have never run into anybody that said we've never heard of you. But 90% of them have heard negative feedback from the West Lakes and the on points. And, you know, you've got a big fee, and you don't pay us the money, and it goes on and on. And I just let them look that all out and then address it one at a time. But I think your first meeting with a dealer is more about listening than talking. <coughs> All my cold call meetings, my willy meetings. <laughs> and this is a great, great story. Uh, I accidentally pulled into a, a dealership thinking it was another dealership, and I walked in and I said, where's Willie? And the guy looked at me and he said, we don't have no Willie. And I said, well, uh, it was Willie Bland. He said, Willie slots about a block down. So, uh, with that said, uh, I thought, what a great opportunity. I said, have you ever heard about credit acceptance? He said, I'm glad you're here. We've been talking about credit acceptance. <laughs> so, I said, well, great. So, I thought, what a great way to, to get into a cold call. You find out who's down the road. You, you know you'd like to call on this dealer. You walk in and say, where's Willie? And so, well, Willie, well, your line sure looks good. <laughs> How about selling more cars and making more money? Boy, that sounds good. All uh, right, let's do it. Well, hold on. He said, uh, is that good? <laughs> is that good? So, that's, that's my Willie technique. I agree with Mike. I start off every meeting with every dealer with the same question. What's your pain? Where's it hurt? Why are we even meeting? You obviously need something or we wouldn't be spending the time together. So tell me where it hurts. Okay. It's invariably wanting to sell more cars and make more money. So that's what we do. Great fit. Let's talk about credit acceptance. To echo everybody else, it's all about the questions. But uh, one of the big questions I always ask is, um, who is pulling the credit bureau? I want to know who's pulling the credit bureau because He's out, obviously, making my credit decision, and that's where I want caps to be placed. Um, of course, I, I love franchises, and so that's, sometimes you have to get through those areas to find out, is it the desk, is it the sales manager, is it the general manager, so who's doing that? So that's one of my biggest questions. Sometimes I don't even introduce myself as credit acceptance. I just want to know who that is, and it's kind of a crazy answer that you'll give, especially in a franchise. They think that you're trying to sell them something else. They don't even know what you're there for. So it's said, you say credit acceptance, where are you at? Oh, you're going to go talk to the finance guy. Then we have a long way to go. So then I ask the right questions. And you ask the right questions, and then, of course, you got to listen. I don't think I really have a 30-second elevator speech. Um, what I do is uh, uh, I call it a soft touch. Uh, I always carry around, and then anybody wants a copy of one, uh, come to the man panel, lunch and learn today. Uh, I have a one-page flyer that uh, one of the other market area managers uh, developed on the team, and it's almost like fishing. Uh, I'll go into a dealership and start laying them on desks, and it just highlights guaranteed credit approval, $800 minimum income, $675 fixed income. I put it on the salespeople's desks. I'll hand it to a guy. Uh, it's got my name and email and phone number at the bottom. And it, it's kind of like just throwing a bunch of bait on the water. And sooner or later, somebody from that dealership, that's the initial soft touch. But they're going to call up. You guys do bankruptcies? You know, you guys don't have a minimum beacon score? Um, 
what they're doing is the second contact, they're actually inviting you back in. Because it's, it's an uphill battle when you're walking in there with your hat in your hand, trying to tell everybody how great you are, and they, they have preconceptions about who you are and what you do anyway. So I do more of a soft touch. I just go in, I lay those little flyers all over the place, and nine times out of ten, it's the salesperson who couldn't get that deal done, or the finance manager. You let them think it's their idea. Then you come in there, you don't have to go in there with your hat in your hand, you're invited into the dealership. It, it just seems to be much more effective for me. And um, I, I brought a couple of them <coughs> today, so if anybody's interested in that, uh, come to the lunch and learn today, and uh, I'll give you, give you some. We've got time for one more question. 